Now, you've said that a second referendum is on Scottish independence is now within touching distance. So how quickly do you think it could happen? I want it to happen next year. And the reason for that is simple. I believe it's time for Scotland to determine what kind of future we want and what kind of country we want to be in. In effect, who decides Scotland's future is one of the central questions at this general election. We can leave our future in the hands of Boris Johnson, be taken out of the EU against our will, have our NHS and workers' rights put at the mercy of Donald Trump, continue down a path that sees tax cuts for the wealthy as prioritised overinvestment in public services and people, or we can take our future into our own hands and choose a Scotland that is open and welcoming, uh, where we put fairness and equality very much at the heart of everything that we do. So that's the, the question for people in Scotland at this election. It really matters. Our future is on the line and it's a choice of what kind of future we want. We heard from Boris Johnson a little earlier on the show. I'm not sure if you managed to catch his mm. entire reply to some of it, my yeah. question when I asked if he would be prepared to give the green light to another uh, independence referendum. He said that he doesn't want to have one, he doesn't see any reason to go back on that, that people have already uh, had their say in a once-in-a-generation event. What did you make of his answer? Well, I thought his waffling was quite instructive, actually. I mean, he... Uh, omitted to recognise the fact that many things have changed since Scotland had an independence referendum in 2014, not least we face being taken out of the EU against our will. But he said he didn't want another referendum. He said he opposed independence. Actually, that's perfectly legitimate. I don't agree with it, but it's legitimate. But I thought it was interesting that he stopped short of saying that he would seek to block the right of the Scottish people to choose. And when you think about it, maybe that's not surprising because uh, when he does say that, particularly at the start of an election campaign, he sounds as if he's saying to the Scottish people that he doesn't care how we vote, he's going to ignore that vote. Now, the fact of the matter is that's not a sustainable position. It's certainly not a democratic position. Everybody in Scotland knows there's going to be another independence referendum. And if people of, of Scotland vote SNP, if the SNP win this election, then that sends a clear message that we want to take our future into our own hands rather than have Boris Johnson continue to impose a future upon us. Um, Jeremy Corbyn, of course, uh, is the other person who perhaps has got the best chance of ending up in number 10 Downing Street after the election. Have you had any conversations with anyone from Labour about whether uh, they could grant uh, a second independence referendum? I've had conversations with Jeremy Corbyn uh, recently. They've tended to focus on Brexit. We've not had uh, a direct conversation about independence or an independence referendum. I think Jeremy Corbyn, like Boris Johnson, is well aware of my position and my party's proposition on that. Again, Jeremy Corbyn's position on this, and I'm no great fan of Jeremy Corbyn, has been a lot more democratic and sensible than his uh, party colleagues in Scotland. Again, he's saying he doesn't want a referendum, he doesn't support independence, but he believes it's for the people of Scotland to decide that question, not for Westminster politicians to stand in its way. And that is, of course, the fundamental issue. We can disagree on what the best future for Scotland is. I passionately believe that that is as an independent country charting our own course, working with others across the UK, Europe and further afield. Uh, others can take a different view, but the people who should decide that question are people here in Scotland. Um, Jeremy Corbyn has told me before that it's something that he wouldn't um, agree to in the first few years, if you like, of a Labour government. I mean, is that something you could live with, it not happening immediately, given it might end up meaning no. that you leave, leave the EU? No, look, I, I think these questions, whether there sh is another independence referendum or not, and what the timescale of that should be, are questions for the Scottish people and the Scottish Parliament to decide. I'm putting a very clear proposition before the Scottish people in this general election, and if, and it's an if, of course, I take nothing for granted, if the SNP win that election, then for any Westminster politician to seek to stand in the way of an independence referendum on that timescale would be seeking to ignore the democratically expressed wishes of the Scottish people. That is not a sustainable position. It's not a democratic position. And uh, as it happens, I don't think it is a, a position that any uh, Westminster politician will be able to stick to. You talk about democracy a lot in this interview. And I just can't help thinking, you know, the SNP want a second Scottish independence referendum. You didn't like the result of the first one. You want a second referendum on Brexit because you didn't like the result of the first one. I mean, how many referendums do you need to see before you accept what people are telling you? 
Well, look, the UK is in a mess. That's not my fault, and it has to work its way out of that mess. Now, let me just take on a, a couple of the, I guess, insinuations in that question. Uh, yes, that's absolutely true. I didn't like the result of the 2014 referendum. I wish it had gone differently, but I accepted that result. Scotland is not independent today. I simply take the view that, particularly given everything that's happened since, in any democracy, people have a right to change their minds. And as far as the Brexit vote is concerned, um, Scotland voted to remain. So all I'm trying to do on Brexit is to stand up for how people in Scotland voted. We want to remain part of the European family of nations. Uh, we don't think the EU is perfect, but we understand the benefits that come from that. We don't want Scotland to uh, turn away from that. We don't want to be closed. We don't want to be seen to be unwelcoming to those who come to our country from elsewhere. We're a, an open, inclusive, welcoming country, and that's how we want to stay. If uh, Scotland is independent, we continue to be the best of friends and neighbours to the other parts of the British Isles, but we can also continue to make our contribution and play our full part in the European Union and further afield. That's the kind of internationalism that is at the very heart of the Scottish independence movement. So if Scotland um, did have a second independence referendum and voted to leave, would you like to see a confirmatory referendum once the terms of the deal and the terms of the departure were made clear, like you want to see in Brexit? No, I, and I don't believe that we should equate the two things. I, I, I don't believe that that is an inevitable part of any democratic referendum process. The problem with Brexit is that nobody was straight in advance of the referendum about what it meant. Uh, there was no detail. It wasn't uh, the kind of informed decision that the 2014 independence referendum was. It's, I, I oppose Brexit, as I, I think you've probably gathered, but there was nothing inevitable about the mess that Brexit has become. By contrast, in 2014, of course, people took different views, but there was a detailed prospectus put forward. People were very informed about the choices they were making. A lot of thought had gone into uh, the compromises and the trade-offs that would be required if Scotland voted yes. One of the most controversial parts of the Yes campaign's proposition was a currency union, saying up front that that was one of the trade-offs that we would uh, seek to bring about. So these two things are, are not the same. I would always want a Scottish independence referendum to be informed with a lot of detail uh, so that people were taking a careful and considered decision. So let's not assume that the mess Brexit has become and some of what might be required now to get out of that mess is an, an inevitable part of a democratic process because it is not. That's the failure of the politicians who put forward that leave prospectus and the ones like Theresa May uh, who tried to implement it without recognising that she was putting forward a lot of contradictory red lines in the process. Um, I'm keen to talk to you as well, uh, just as we kind of finish up, about the election that we are uh, fighting imminently, if you like. And um, what would be a good yep. night for the SNP? <laughs> Well, look, I, I don't put an upper limit on the ambitions of my party. We fight. We are a national party. We will fight in every corner of Scotland and every constituency of Scotland. Uh, but I also take nothing for granted. I mean, we sometimes forget, all of us, media and indeed uh, my own party, that before 2015, the biggest number of MPs that the SNP had ever had at one time was 11. Uh, we've now got 35, so of course we want to increase that tally, but it's a difficult thing to do. So we'll be fighting hard for every vote, every constituency, putting forward a very strong prospectus about the future of Scotland and the need to be the ones in the driving seat of deciding that future. Um, and then we'll trust the people of Scotland to vote in the way that's best for the future of Scotland.